Welcome everybody to Techcraft, this is Rob, and in today's video, we'll be talking about overclocking the Raspberry Pi using a Seed Studio ice tower fan for active cooling. Let's go. So following on from my recent Raspberry Pi videos, quite a few viewers were interested in the thermal performance of the Pi, in particular wondering how does it perform under heavy load? Is there any kind of throttling? The answer to that is absolutely yes. At 80 degrees Celsius, the Pi will throttle and performance on the CPU will definitely drop. Now, you can push the Pi to 80 degrees C in stock configuration, but it's quite hard and it does a pretty good job of maintaining the temperature just below that. If you start to overclock the Pi, however, it's very easy to push way beyond that 80 degrees C and you do need some uh, active cooling if you want to actually get a meaningful overclock. So today we're going to take a look at what kind of performance improvements you can expect, how you actually go about overclocking the Pi, and we're going to look at cooling the Pi with this cool Seed Studio Ice Tower fan. So let's just dive straight in with the actual numbers and the tests that I run. I run six different configurations at 1.5 gigahertz, 1.75 gigahertz, and 2.1 gigahertz, and I run those three each time cooled and non-cooled. So for my test, I was compiling FFmpeg directly on the Raspberry Pi using the configuration that I use at home for my security cameras. I know this to be a reasonably taxing compute task, which takes around about 13, 14 minutes in general. Looking at the graphs here, the orange bars are the non-cooled outcomes and the blue bars are the cooled outcomes, and a smaller bar is better. So at the 1.5 gigahertz mark, which is the standard stock CPU frequency, there was no difference in performance between the cooled and the non-cooled runs. And when we see the temperatures, you'll kind of see why that is. At the 1.75 gigahertz mark, there's no speed improvement when you're not cooling. So you can kind of maintain a stable overclock there, but it doesn't do anything. If you introduce active cooling though, there is a noticeable improvement in performance that's definitely worthwhile. When you crank it all the way up to 2.1 gigahertz, the non-cooled performance just drops off a cliff. And this is because there was an excessive amount of thermal throttling. For most of the test, the, compute, the CPU was just throttled throughout. However, when you introduce cooling, there's a huge improvement in performance. I saved like one and a half minutes here on the compile time just by overclocking to 2.1 gigahertz and having that active cooling. So if you take a look at the temperatures, you'll kind of see where this all comes from. At 1.5 gigahertz, in both runs, cooled and non-cooled, the temperature is well below 80. Uh, degrees Celsius. It's obviously massively below when you're using the cooling. At 1.75 gigahertz, it's still below 80 Celsius in the non-cooled version, but it does actually throughout the test kind of creep up occasionally to 80 and you'll see a little bit of throttling. When you're doing 2.1 gigahertz though, it's pegged way up against 80 and sometimes you'll see even like 83, 84, 85 for a couple of seconds, maybe like 30 seconds throughout the test, and that's where these the huge amount of throttling comes from. Notice though, in the cooled state, it doesn't actually get any warmer than 40 degrees Celsius. So there's a huge amount of headroom there. Obviously, if you could push the pie further than I have, then maybe you get more performance. I think this is the best, most stable overclock you'll get out of the pie. So when you hear me talking about throttling here, this is something I'm actually measuring on the Pi. I'm measuring both thermal throttling and power throttling. You need to be wary when you're overclocking that you're you have to increase the amount of power you're delivering to the, to the CPU, and that might actually uh, not be possible with the power supply or the lead you're using. So you need to check for both of those. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll show you the commands you can run to check for both thermal and power throttling. So actually configuring overclocking on the Pi is really easy. I was actually quite surprised at just how easy it is. If you ever tried overclocking a PC, you'll know you're fiddling around in the BIOS. None of that on the Pi. Just edit a quick text file and away we go. So let's go over to the iPad and I'm going to show you how to do that. So here I am, I'm SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi. You can obviously do this from a terminal directly on the Pi itself, but I don't have a monitor connected to my Pi, so just easy to SSH in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a program called Nano, which we're gonna run as the super user, that's what the sudo means, and we're gonna edit boot slash config.txt. So once that file's open, we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom, and we're looking for a section that is labeled Pi4 in square brackets like we have here. And I've already overclocked this particular Pi to um, 1.75 gigahertz. So that's what the ARM frequency parameter here means. And this is in megahertz. So 1,750 megahertz is 1.75 gigahertz. The other setting you need to set is over voltage. You need to deliver extra power to the Pi's core to actually reach this frequency. Now, the valid values for the over voltage range from minus 16 to eight. And minus 16 means 800 millivolts and eight means 1.4 volts, so each increment is 25 millivolts. Now, 
To set over voltage to anything above six, you actually need to uh, force turbo, which is another option you can set. This will completely void your warranty. Um, so I'll link to that in the description below if that's something you wanna play with, but you're absolutely on your own with that. I obviously don't recommend it. So the two options I used were over voltage two for 1750 uh, megahertz, and I used over voltage six for 2100 megahertz like that. Those two configurations I've tested extensively and I know that they work. In general, I'm running, when I've got my cooling on, I'm running over voltage six, arm frequency 2100, but you have to make sure you have a very stable power supply for that. Once you've changed this in the file, you're gonna press Control and O, and then you're gonna write that by pressing Enter, and then Control and X to exit. Now, all you need to do is do a reboot, and you're good to go. So as we saw from the test results, you absolutely need to have some kind of active cooling if you want to get a stable overclock from your Pi. And even if not, it's so easy to push the Pi right close to the thermal limit that it does make sense to have some kind of cooling if you're gonna be doing a lot of compute heavy stuff. So I've got this Pi here that I use for my home automation stack. And part of that involves doing video transcoding from my security cameras. And I've been using this Seed Studio Ice Tower fan that they very nicely sent to me for this project. Really easy installation. It comes with this screwdriver in the box in case you haven't got a screwdriver. And all you do is install these little risers here above the uh, support holes on the Pi chip itself. And then these two brackets go straight onto the fan and screw in, it takes about two minutes. It comes complete with this acrylic base, which I found a real nice touch. This just adds extra airflow under the board, but also keeps everything stable and flat, which massively reduces the, um, uh, the vibration you get when the fan is running. And to my mind is part of the reason why this fan is so quiet. Actually powering the fan is done from the GPIO pins on the Pi. And my only niggle I had with this fan is that this was not particularly well documented. If you were not too familiar with the pins, then you might find this confusing. But essentially this pin here and this one here are five, five volt pins and they go to the red wire. And this pin here is ground that goes to the black wire. You can actually make the fan a little bit quieter if you find it too noisy by shifting this red wire to the 3.3 volt pin, which is right there next to the main five volt pin. Um, but honestly, I found this to be essentially whisper quiet, so I've not bothered with that. As you saw from the earlier shots, when it's running, it's nice. It has the RGB light effect, which makes a big difference. And I actually now have this pie on my desk because it looks so cool. So I've seen this fan all over the place on the internet, various different prices, anywhere between 20 bucks and 25 bucks. The cheapest I've seen it is directly from Seed Studio where it is just shy of $20. So if you're gonna look into buying it, I would definitely recommend it buying it direct from Seed Studio. In my mind, if you're running a bunch of compute heavy workloads on the Pi at home, then this fan is a real bargain. $20 is not that much, and it does give you a, a noticeable improvement in performance and a huge reduction in temperature, which I have to assume is gonna improve the life of the Pi and probably reduce power consumption as well. So I'm gonna be picking up a few more of these because I've got a few more Pis that I'm running quite hot at the moment. So as I mentioned before, if you're gonna start experimenting with overclocking yourself and, and trying to put some cooling on there, you'll want to be able to measure the voltage delivered to your core, you'll want to be able to measure the clock frequency and the temperature, and obviously the throttle state as well. So let's see how to do that. So when you're SSH back into your machine, the command you want to use is VC Gen CMD, and there's a bunch of options you can run for this, and the easiest one to start with is measure temp. This just tells you what the core temperature is. So my current core temperature is 28 Celsius, which obviously is great. Um, you can run this multiple times, and as you run it, it will change. They're obviously 29 now, I'm connected and doing things, so it's gonna get warmer. When you're on uh, connected to your fan or your cooling, you'll see these temperatures. If you're running this standard in just a normal room, it doesn't get much lower than 40 in my experience, so you'll definitely see the difference there immediately once you've connected your fan. To measure the clock speed, it's VC Gen CMD again, this time measure clock. And because there are lots of different clocks you can measure in the power, you can measure the GPU and various other things. The, the CPU clock speed is the ARM core. So you just type in ARM at the end there and that will give you the frequency. Now, because the Pi has quite aggressive power consumption uh, monitoring, it doesn't run at full frequency all the time. So you notice here it's running about 700 megahertz. This is great because it's not doing, doing much, so it's not consuming a lot of power. The moment you start doing anything meaningful, it will definitely crank up. And I noticed basically as soon as I started my test off, it went straight to the max clock speed. So you can also measure the voltage you're getting, and this is a good way of checking that your over voltage has uh, kicked in, so measure volts. 
Uh, that's what you need to type in. I'm getting just over one volt there. This is around about right. Um, you're not going to see the absolute max for your configuration because again, it is definitely powered down while not doing too much. But as you kick in your test and you start doing a low CPU intensive stuff, that voltage will creep up. And then the final command that's really interesting is to check the throttle state. So if you run vcg gen command get underscore throttled, what you get back is this little throttled equals and then some value. This is a bit value. It gets kind of annoying to, uh, to kind of pull this apart and figure out what's going on. I'm throwing up a table on the screen now to show you which bits you're looking for. And then to find out what bits are actually set, what you can do is just take a value like this one here, which is a throttled value and paste it into Google and say, give me this in binary and it will show you what bits are set. So here we can see that the second bit and the 17th bit are set. And that means according to our table that we have had some throttling. In general, if you have got sufficient cooling and you've got enough power to your unit, you'll always see that throttle is equal zero. So that means there are no bits set and there's been no throttling. What I like about this throttle state is that some of the bits say that throttling has occurred in the past. So you can even just see like, hey, overnight I was running something, did it run slow? I'm not quite sure why. Check if like previous throttling had happened, but you can also check with some of the bits where the active throttling is happening as well. So this was a really fun little project. I was really glad to receive this fan in the post and actually kind of get around solving a little niggle of mine, which is I was not really happy with the performance I was getting from my security camera stack. And now with the overclock and the improved cooling, my Pi is a lot more stable and I get the performance out of it that I want. So I hope you found this video useful and I hope that you found it entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. If you are interested in hearing more about this security camera thing I keep talking about and the home automation work I've been doing with my Raspberry Pi, then that's coming next week in a video. So please do subscribe to that. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.